Yeah, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Digest with GBD Students, brought to you by Amstel Malta. Now, when I have a naughty legal issue that I don't understand, there are one or two lawyers that I call. The first, my first choice always is my very good friend, Yemi Candid Johnson, SAN. And I had told you when this Umahi controversy came about, before the apology, that I was going to call, you know, invite him to give us his usual lecture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on the law. Good morning, Yemi. How are you doing? Good morning, Jimmy. It's a pity I'm not wearing my own Castro shirt today, but we are still a natural being in terms of color. Gray, gray, you know. That's good, good start. Good start. <laughs> but, but, you know, next time I'll make sure I wear my Castro shirt. <laughs> uh, by the way, before we go into the issue at hand, I was just wondering, yesterday we had the um, benefit of seeing the lady standing trial for murder of that TV man, the, the Chidima, you know, mm-hmm. Kujuku. And uh, she took part in the beauty contest in, in the prison, uh, and um, she won, and became the beauty queen, 2022. No, yeah, 2022. And my mind is so much on 2023. I think we're already oh. inside it. And so, and so, um, I felt uncomfortable, but Libros was able to, you know, put me through certain things yesterday, and um, then the the. PRO of the prison said that, look, they did this thing for the inmates. An inmate is an inmate, you know, whether you're on trial or not. And, and then she took part. And um, But I'm just wondering, if you were her lawyer, would you have, um, and she had asked your opinion, would you have told her, to, you know, given her the go-ahead to participate? Or told her that, look, you don't need all that attention on you for now. Let's face your trial. I'm just thinking... Yes, um, of course, she's accused. She hasn't been convicted. Yes. 70% of the people in our prisons are awaiting trial and are being victimized by the fact that without any conviction, they're being held as if they were condemned. Hmm. But if I was defending a criminal accused, Hmm. especially one accused of such a heinous crime, I would avoid publicity, which was bad publicity as much as possible. Hmm. The frivolity and the um, licentiousness of a beauty contest is something that I think would be harmful to the public impression of a woman in that situation. Mm. I certainly would have asked her to avoid it. Mm. I, I, would, I, would, I would consider her to be now the victim of exploitation within the prison because when you, a beauty contest, of course, is a, is a frivolous event and it's, it's, um, it's part of the sexual... It, celib- it was to celebrate International Women's Day. Well, it's part of the... The idea of using a beauty contest to celebrate International Women's Day, I find, frankly, quite offensive. It's yes. commoditization <laughs> and victimization of women. Hmm. And that's what it is. It's a, it's a glorification of the um, puerile de- and, and, and passion, de- the desires of, of, of men. I think it's... it's I, I would consider to have been victimized by being displayed in this way. Mm. I also I also said to Libros, um, in line with what you what you said, I said I'm sure the could the judge be affected by a thing like this in reality? Absolutely. I mean, if you, it's it's going to create passions, and in respect of that individual, uh, which one cannot predict, one cannot predict, but which would have an impact on how she's viewed, even by someone who has to judge her as a witness of fact. Hmm. So I think it's it's damaging to her case. I, I think that I, I, I would be very surprised if she thought it was in her benefit or anybody advising her legally thought it was in her benefit to go into such a contest and have this, what is adverse publicity mm. at a time when she needs to be establishing her innocence. Yeah, and also, um, I mean, if we were to look at it holistically, I wonder in what state of mind the family of the victim, I mean, whether we like it or not, even though we haven't found her guilty, but um, he's dead. Yes, so that's, that's, that's uh, the aspect. And, and that can be creating. Of course. So altogether, it's bad business as far as I'm concerned. Do you think that the prison authorities should have thought of things like this and keep it to those who are actual convicts? Sure, absolutely. And why should this receive publicity? Why should this be a matter that they think is worth being ventilated in the public? I can understand... You need to keep them entertained. You need to keep them engaged. They're human beings who are, yes. who are in prison. But this is this is damaging. The, the escape of this information and the images associated with it, I think, is damaging. You saw you saw the photograph. Yes, I, yeah, I saw a photograph of. Well, I assume it was 
the lady who was wearing some sort of crown. Yes, she was uh, one. So yes. I, I, that, that's my guess. I wouldn't have been able to identify her otherwise. And that, I think, is, is most regrettable. I, I, I don't want to offend you further by asking if you thought she was pretty anyway. I'm not really so sure what pretty means. <laughs> but if you were to define it, I would try to approximate that to the features that were displayed that is, in my okay. picture. Yes. You had a good look, huh? I hope that's a good enough answer. <laughs> I said you had a good look. No, no, but I would if you asked me to. If, <laughs> test, if tested, I would certainly look at the picture. Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay, mm -hmm. let's get down to proper business today. Yemi County Johnson SAN is here. And we want to look at the Umahi case. Um, I think I'll take it from the one I found most offensive, and that was the reaction of the governor, mm. which thankfully he's tried to retract, mm. but the damage has been done. Mm. You know, sometimes when you try to retract these things, I think it's an exercise in futility. Mm. The damage has been done. But what do you think of that? Um, where I, I said yesterday that if we continue to react to every judgment mm. in such a manner, then the average person is bound to lose confidence in the judiciary. As it is, that's what it is now anyway. Mm -hmm. The thinking of most people is that you can buy judgments. Well, we have judgments going all the way up to the Supreme Court, you know, in, in public debate and public reactions, especially mm -hmm. in parties involved. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we do something to correct that anomaly? Where, it, whether ethically or otherwise, where it says that, look, if you're involved in a case, you can have an appeal and so on and so forth, but to express that kind of opinion in public, should be it should be sanctioned couldn't he for example have been charged for contempt yes that's the short answer to the question he could be charged for contempt because contempt is conduct which interferes in the administration of justice mm. it's, it's, it's conduct which interferes in the administration of justice and we all have an obligation in in a liberal democratic society to preserve the rule of law and the structures of our justice system Mm. That responsibility belongs to members of the public, but it belongs, first of all, to judges themselves, those in whose hands the administration of justice is entrusted by law and the Constitution. Now, I, I know there's a great deal of alarm about what this governor said, and prima facie, on the face of it, it's, it's, it's contempt of court. Um, but on the other hand, if he's right, then... Ah. Then he, it would be something that needed to be said. You cannot, under the guise of a device that is intended to protect the integrity of the administration of justice, allow the integrity of the system of justice to be subverted by other people. Hmm. So if I was advising him, I would say, uh, is what do you have information to support these allegations? If you've done so, I would consider that to be a defense. Wouldn't that be risky if you were then... If you knew within your heart that it was right, wouldn't I, I? Don't understand the question. Uh, you, <laughs> uh, you missed the moment. Yes. Uh, okay. I, I said that you said you you would want him to come show some proof and so on and yes. so forth. You'd be able to do that if you were sure of where you stood. Sure, of course. I'm so if you were not too sure, you might have to let it slide. Yeah. Look, you can't make allegations in public which you cannot sustain. Um, this mm. is for an ordinary man, more so a person who is a chief executive of a state, he holds a position of very serious responsibility. And therefore, every remark he makes, which will have a consequence for the public, and indeed, uh, it's it's a bigger impact on the system of justice if a governor says that there's corruption in the judiciary, the judiciary yeah. than if an ordinary man says so. And, and so he should have the sense of responsibility and the maturity to be able to measure his words. It's often said that uh, it's intelligence to know what to say. It's wisdom to know when to say it. Hmm. And I think that you one would have would expect wisdom from a governor, but of course this may well be a far fetched proposition in many instances. Why do you think the judge went quiet on it, and then it took the president of the NBA, you know, to call the governor to, to caution? It's not it's not for judges to defend themselves in public. I see. Uh, this is this is a could fact. he have in reported him to the police? I mean, okay, fine, he has immunity. Yeah. So it makes it a little bit more, makes it a bit messy. But ha if it had been somebody like me or like mm. you or whatever, mm. would, would would the judge be in a position to say, go get this person arrested? What ways, what, how would he, what are the channels he would have to go through? You know, a, a judge should vindicate the law. He should defend the law. 
he should defend the administration of justice against those who would undermine it, whoever they are. Mm. And there are an array of devices to achieve that. But that the individual judge himself has self confidence both in his knowledge of the law and in his in his own integrity. Exactly. Because you open a can of worms for I'll tell you an interesting story many years ago. It's I, I don't know whether young people were not remembered, but, but it was quite an issue at the time in respect of my own father, who as you know was a judge. Okay. And in the course of a case, I can't remember what case it was, um, Professor Bion Wabwezi, who is the constitutional some people regard him as a big constitutional, because, uh, yeah. sent a an article or a letter to the court private to the judge, it was delivered, giving advice on the conduct of a case. This was contempt. I think it was on a Friday. On a month, in the case of my father, he ordered the show cause, show cause why I shouldn't be committed to prison for contempt. Ah. It became a big issue. Lots of pleas, forgive. He had to come before the courts, humble himself, explain his conduct. He had no intention, apologized to the court. But he was brought to the court within 48 hours oh, well. to show cause why he should not be committed for contempt. Now, that's because the judge had confidence in his own mm. knowledge of law, in his own integrity, and he had the ability to contain the dignity and power of his court. Um, the, the danger we, the, the, beyond Umahi's outburst and the consequences to him or to the system of justice is the type of decisions we're receiving from courts these days which do a great deal more to undermine confidence in the integrity and soundness of our system of justice. Hmm. The, 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 um, there are so many things. If you're not a lawyer, you can't follow these things. Hmm. Um, so there was a court, court case in Abakaliki that said this. and this. These various judgments that we have, hmm. which would be sacrosanct amongst them, um, one, two, if judgment has been given, in a case mm. on an issue, mm. would it be right for another judge to take it on? Again, the simple answer is no. Um, and you, you identify, therefore, the problem of inconsistency of judgments and decisions by courts across the country. Mm. Um, it has become so rampant and so oh, reckless yes. that the integrity of the system of justice is being undermined, the authority and credibility of judges is at a an all-time low so what are the facts that we know of the present case one judge gave a decision I, I happen to think the judge who gave the decision in the federal high court is a man who has sound judicial knowledge so i'd like to read his judgment and see what was his reasoning i wouldn't dismiss it mm -hmm. out of hand there had been a previous decision which seemed similar in another state zamfara state where the same facts seem to have produced a different result and subsequent to that, another judge in Abakaliki, in within the territorial domain of the judge, mm -hmm. of, the, of the, the governor, has issued a very peculiar decision purporting to set aside the decision of the federal high court and characterizing his decision as what he called, in legal jargon, a judgment in REM. Mm. Um, this, this creates a whole range of problems. The inconsistency, as I said, damages the reputation and credibility of the justice system across the board. The, the fact that it is easy for lawyers, senior lawyers even, senior advocates of Nigeria, in, in Abakaliki they said they had assembled 17 SANs, whatever that means. <laughs> it's not about numbers, it's about the quality of your thinking and your knowledge of law. And they have been able to procure, and I use that word advisedly, to procure at short notice from a judge an order which on, it, on its face seems frivolous and futile, hmm. suggests to me again, that there is a poison and a, a decay in the heart of our justice system, which many, with judges and senior lawyers conspire to exploit, especially in respect to political cases. I found the judgment, the, the, the latest decision from the Abakaliki court to be almost farcical. And if it wasn't so sad, I would be laughing. Yeah, don't laugh. <laughs> because they'll have to rain into of us. <laughs> what is this? Uh, this is an aside, but I had an argument with Madame here. Well, not an, sorry, we had a discussion yesterday okay. about this idea of getting 17 sons. What does it do to your case? Well, if you want them to vote in an election, the numbers helps. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that this so idea of appearing with saying, 17? saying you have seventeen sons, it's 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 childish. It's a it's a stunt which has no legal benefit. 
it's uh, you know it, in in the good old days, someone said Chief Williams was appearing in a case. Yes, you knew there was going to be law, there was going to be gravity, there was going to be deep and penetrating analysis. Yes. now you can get a string because there there, there is a a high number of senior advocates available, and I guess if you if if you join a team of seventeen SNs to argue a case like this, you may not be as busy as one would have thought a senior advocate of Nigeria should be. Hmm. Okay, on the average, what does it cost to get a senior advocate to court? On the average, we're not asking how much you charge. It's impossible to do. Don't worry, the it's, LRS... It's it's impossible to... to, to no, but it's something between what and what? Something between 100 naira and, and oh, multiples no. of that sum. Oh, no. I was boasting here yesterday. Many SCNs work for free. Oh, really? Of course, in cases. I mean, I, I'm doing a number of cases in which there's no... no, no oh, but no but those are pro bono cases. Sure. And, and they might not, but if a governor put a call through to you to be part of 17 governors... Well, I would, I would, I would, I would be very anxious if a governor called me because my first anxiety would be that I didn't want to participate in the laundering of money that had been obtained unlawfully. Oops. I mean, when you have a case, and I've heard of cases where they're paying somebody half a billion naira. Mm. If a government official is paying that money, there's a 90% chance that money has Madden been corruptly has obtained heard, yeah. and that you are part of a money laundering operation. So I, I wouldn't be willing to put that money in my I, bank I won't account. use the word operation. I'd rather use enterprise. Yes, <laughs> criminal enterprise. <laughs> That's what is a criminal conspiracy. Our lines are open 0700-993-993-993 and the other line 0146571190. At the appropriate time, we'll open up the line, so get ready. You know, I watched about three years ago, three or four years ago, you were interviewed by channels. Mm -hmm. Four or five years ago, anyway. And you made a point that stuck in my mind to say that it is becoming unfortunate that to settle political issues, we always now have to head to the court. Because what the court decides are the legal issues, but the will of the people in terms of the numbers Correct. might not be uh, taken into consideration at some time. So we are now winning elections in the courts. Yes. You remember, you remember that statement? Yes, yes you remember I, I made that statement yes. I made before, yes. Yes, um, and um, nothing has changed since then. Mm. How do we go around that? Well, it, it is a problem. Um, the purpose of elections is to test the opinion of the people. Uh, and I was reading an academic article earlier this year where, which started with the declaration that some politicians prepare, prepare to win the vote and some politicians simply get a good lawyer good mm. quote on quote and look for technicalities and, and, and look for a judge that that will give them the case now that is such a violent subversion of the democratic system that it destabilizes it because if people recognize that their opinion doesn't count they have no reason to show any deference mm. to those in political power and and across liberal democracies in the world there is a settled principle that courts defer to the political process it is not usual for courts to intervene and to decide political contests. If there's a legal problem with it, then the people should have the opportunity once more to express their... If, and and the, the test should be, has the will of the people been captured here? Hmm. Do we know this to be the expression of their will? If that's the case, then it would be, in my opinion, very dangerous to subvert the will of the people under the guise of any sort of legal Device. Yeah, because in this case, the judge is of the view that, that the votes that were cast were cast for the PDP, not necessarily for the candidate. How do we determine that? Well, that's a difficult question on, on which our courts have given some pronouncements. Mm. Uh, um, in the case of Amechi, the Supreme Court said the votes belong to the party. The party. In another case, they said it belongs to the individual. The, 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 our electoral law is, is really, um, has gone through so many stages and iterations, and they're trying to correct various issues. But fundamental to, to the legitimacy of all elections is what was the will of the people and has it been expressed freely and fairly? That is the question. Now, I cannot understand personally, from a personal logical standpoint, how a party presents a candidate and that candidate can be substituted. It seems to me that you, nail, you, you ask somebody to be your flag bearer 
which okay. means it is in his own name that he carries your flag. But your, your party cannot be a candidate in an election. It has to be an individual. Hmm. People, voters vote for an individual. The party merely indicates to them what to expect from him. What are the policies? What is the manifesto and agenda? And who are the people he associates with? Can we trust them? But it's the individual who is on the ballot who you vote for. So I find it very difficult if I vote for Jimmy Disu as candidate of, of the PDP and someone says, well, he's no longer in the PDP. That is a moral and a political question. It means that the political process should deal with how to punish him for dumping his party. Mm -hmm. It's not a legal matter because he has been properly elected and the Constitution provides a limited number of means by which a governor may be removed from office. This declaration made by this judge, as I said, I haven't read the judgment and mm -hmm. he may, there may be some brilliant exposition which has not occurred to many constitutional scholars uh, before and, and, and I, I, I give him that the benefit of the doubt. But that is the problem. A man has been elected whether he changes the his, party. Exactly. Whether he changes his political affiliation or not is a political rather than a legal issue. Wow. Well, one issue here is I gotta take a break. Yes, okay. <laughs> I gotta take a break. That's <laughs> that's where my next uh, Cuban shirt is coming from. <laughs> 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 I've been talking to Yemi Kati Johnson as and talking about a few legal issues here and there. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll take one or two of your calls and then we'll continue the discussion. Don't go away. Stuck Dial Daily Digest returns in a moment. Hey, put a spotlight on me. Now let me tell you this. I used to care for the world's opinion. And I used to fear their rejection. Or more, I used to beg for validation. And I used to wait to be seen. But now... No more. No more. No more. Says my time. My time. My time. My own time is now. So what are you waiting for? I'm still Malta. Be your best. Hey, put a spotlight on me. Now let me tell you this. I used to care for the world's opinion. And I used to fear their rejection. Or more, I used to beg for validation. And I used to wait to be seen. But now, no more. No more. No more. Says my time. My time. My time. My own time is now. So what are you waiting for? I'm still Malta. Be your best. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Daily Digest with Jimmy Disney. So is this one. Yeah, you welcome back to the Daily Digest with Jimmy Disu, and uh, this program is brought to you courtesy Amstel Malta. Okay, and I have Mr. Yemi Candy Johnson, SAM, uh, in the studio. Our lines are buzzing, so let me take my first caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, ma. How are you? This very well, thank you. This is Bumi, and I'm calling from Ekota. I just have a question yes, uh, based on what the last thing the, your guest said. Yes. If we vote for candidates who represent parties, therefore it's the that gets the position. Why do we vote for party symbol? Doesn't that suggest that it is the party we're voting for? That's a good one. Did you hear what she said? Sure. Yeah. It's it's a matter of mechanics. Um, the, the simple question, it, it's worthy of analysis and discussion. Mm. But the fact is that every party must present a candidate. So the contemplation of the law is that the person who will occupy the position is a human being. And one human being must be different from the other. This is why if you if you decide to put um, Jimmy Deeson in, in one of the parties, you would vote because of him. Why it is candidates, you, you campaign on the platform of a, party. of a party. That is the agenda of a party. But the office can only be held by an individual. And although I, I think that is a problem that you don't see the candidates, the way our, our elections in Nigeria are organized, you're seeing party symbols yes. and you can't exercise a judgment. 
But then the campaign is about human beings. So uh, I can see where the confusion would arise. Don't you think it's a bit of a mix? Mm. Um, I remember back uh, 15 years ago, one ATPC back, Wajale, Wadibovu. Mm. Uh, which, yes, without even knowing who he was mm. uh, um, or who it is, you know, I, I think it's a bit of... In, in, of in, there's, there's some constituencies in, in England where if they put a dog, the, he will be re- the, to- the Tory candidate will be returned. Yes. And there's some constituencies where the Labour Party will be returned even if he's a sheep. Yes. That is clear. But it is still an individual. Um, our, the, 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 the structure of all democracies and governments means that regardless of platform, it is individuals who occupy, who occupy offices. offices. So you cannot, you cannot, however you organize election, you cannot divorce the holding of an office from the individual. And once people have expressed a preference for an individual, it's difficult for you to then say, well, he represents the party. That is a political rather than a legal issue. Mm. I expect that if you decamp from your party, you should face a political price. Mm. I'm just not sure that that price should be exacted by the legal process. Um, not just because it's, it's problematical conceptually, but also because it then brings the judges directly into determining the choice of voters for particular offices. This is not their function, and it is damaging to the, to the efficiency and effectiveness of the judiciary. Okay, um, let, let's get another one before I then... I need to ask you one or two things as a Lagosian. Hello, good morning. Hello. Oh, we lost that one. Hello. Hello, sir. Abajimi, good morning, sir. Morning. I greet the legal editor. Alabala, what is my name? Yes. Yes. From Sabo, Jehovah, in Ojo. Yes. Abajimi, I have a question for the legal head. But yes. before I go, before I ask my question, sir, um, that is why some of us we are calling for. Uh, independent candidacy. So uh, mm. the, the, this issue of party or no party, at the end of the day, we not be saw our hand or somebody will not be controlling us or some people will not say they are the owner of the party. So we are clamoring for, for independent candidacy. And then my question is this, sir. What if... Are you there, sir? We are listening to you. So my question is this, sir. What if... I'm just assuming. I'm, I, I'm just assuming. What if um, APC lose Emboy? What will now happen to Edo, Benue, um, Shokoto, and then one other state again? So okay. that is my question. Good uh, okay, he's asking that the, with the presidents of what is happening in uh, what would happen to the likes of uh, no, but this uh, Obasaki decamped before the election. Correct. So it won't it won't hold water. Won't affect there. there. Yeah. But then there's a problem. He asked the question is is valid because there's an inconsistency in the approach of courts to mm. this issue, um, and, and and what will happen? It can only be somebody's guess mm. because it is a fundamental of our judicial system that like cases should be decided alike. Mm. This is a, a a principle that has been expressed two thousand four hundred years ago. Aristotle expressed that that principle because. The people in any political society need to be able to predict what will be the result of their actions. So they should say, they should go to law and say, well, look, the last five cases, this is how a court decided it. So therefore, regulate your behavior according to this guidance. Mm. But if we get to the situation which we have in Nigeria where any type of decision is possible, you're going to have high instability in the political and, and governance process because people don't know how to behave. Mm. You're going to have a high tendency to corrupt, corrupt individuals because... There will be uh, there will be motivations other than law and logic to deciding legal questions, mm. and you will have uh, a, a, a total derogation from the from the quality, the standard that you expect from judges, and the judicial system will be brought into disrepute. It's very dangerous. Okay, I can't resist not asking mm. you this, being a Lagosian, mm. um, <laughs> and it must be of great concern to you the mm. development in the NUITW. I mean, it's not a legal matter, yes, yeah. but I know as a senior negotiator, you'd, you'd have your opinion on it. And I think it's time mm. that most of us um, at least voiced our opinion mm. on what's going on mm. uh, for or against, as the case might be. Mm. So what is your take on this, the 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 ban? Is it is it a ban? Yes, mm. the ban on LURTW activities, mm. blah, blah. Mm. And what you think the development might be? Remember, let me background you a little bit. Mm. Um 
it is being said in certain quarters that this gentleman wants to form a parallel union. Mm. Okay. In fact, it's so it's so funny that his presence was so large that I didn't even know there was a national union anyway. I thought it was just the overall boss of everything. Mm. So it turns out that he wants to form, it is being said he wants to form a parallel union. The legality of that, I don't know. You might have to call the mm. attorney general to sort that out mm. with him. But where does that take us? This development where, to put it in the safest way with you, in case I go to court, I'll have you to defend mm. me. Mm. People who should be of uh, interest mm. to our security forces now <laughs> I, I, I love the guardedness of your remarks. Yeah, um, yes. You have referred to a gentleman, and I assume that that expression gentleman is used liberally. And, and Well, and, sometimes you have to be liberal in these cases. Right. Yes. Right. Well, so if assuming this um, hypothetical scenario that a gentleman wished to form an association with or without some people, that is a right guaranteed by the Constitution. The Constitution okay. guarantees freedom of association, and any individual, gentleman or not, should be free to form whatever association that he chooses. Even if it's a union? Well, there's a law that regulates union. Unions, yes. I, I thought about that sure. too. So if you, if you comply, for example, if you want to form a political party, if you're in the APC or PDP and you want to form a party um, called Dancing Girls Party. Sure, sure if go you ahead. fulfill the requirements, you can do so. If you want to incorporate a company, you fulfill the legal requirements, you do so. So from that perspective, any individual can form, unform, dissemble, assemble any series of associations. But with respect to specific individuals, and, and if we're talking about associations which impact on the public and whose behavior may be disruptive to public peace and order, mm. then even the capacity of such an, of an individual who should be of interest to security forces or to police, being involved in such an association is something which I think the law would not tolerate. And I think that that is a matter that is worthy of investigation. Mm. Even if he has police protection? Well, you see, this again is a, is a problem. Um, there are a lot of Nigerians who hold no office, mm. um, who hold no, who are not in any particular danger, who are guarded by the police. Yes. This is dangerous to the capacity of police to detect and investigate crime. Very often, therefore, what will happen is that crimes will be committed under the gaze of the police who have been delegated to protect these individuals, and the police themselves become complicit. In why why has it suddenly become so rampant? You know, uh, um, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You go to a function these days, yes. everybody has one or two policemen. Yes. Or policewoman, as the case may be. Sometimes carrying rice for them. Carrying rice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that, that these days, police escorts are a fashion accessory. Yes. So I like if, the way you put it. Yeah. So if you're, if, if you're trendy and you're leading, you need to have a police following you behind. And a PA. Sure, exactly. Until, I mean, yeah. I, I heard a former inspector general of police say at a public meeting recently that these are poorly trained and poorly equipped operatives and that they're not there to provide security and that if the if the vip quote unquote was in danger they would be the first to run so definitely so it's a fashion accessory it, yeah definitely it's a fashion accessory you want to show you a big person it's 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 ridiculous it's embarrassing uh, i consider it to be shameful and it's unlawful it's unlawful of course it's unlawful why is a policeman dedicated uh, there, there, are no, there are a thousand crimes in the city the police can't be found in the to investigate, prosecute them, which is their function. But the principal function of our police is as um, social and fashion ac accessories to the, el to the social, political elite, including gangs of criminals. There are, there are criminal operators in Nigeria who would appear to be operating with the ceremonial protection of law enforcement. Law enforcement. Uh, how, on, this, on the social front, the police is funded by public money. Correct. Taxes collected and so on and so forth. Right. Now, so on the social front, you're collecting taxes from the many yes. and providing protection only for the few. Sure. And I'm being nice about it, putting it that way, or else I'll be talking about the poor and the rich. You can't, if a crime occurs on the street, you're likely to find no ordinary police. There's no, there's no police walking on the streets. There's no foot patrols. 
you, but if there's a big man living on this street, maybe one of his mobile police may come out and intervene in the matter. I've seen this happen a lot. I mean, mm. as I said, every jumped up jacko who has more than a few hundred thousand naira can get told me recently what they consider to be the person. You, you pay this person, you pay that, right? And then you supply this, this thing. It, it's the process described for getting police protection is a criminal conspiracy. Hmm. So how do we break this book completely? Yes. Uh, look at the videos of some social events. I don't know if you spy hmm. talk once in a while. I know you're a busy person. I don't know, but if you look at the social events, you yeah. know, almost every Tom, Dick, Harry, whatever, yes. has one or two policemen behind yes. them, like carrying rice and bath, yes. providing umbrellas. And, and picking up your notes from the floor. From the floor. Yes, the why people dance on it. By some lunatic. I thought there was, thought there was a law against praying. Of course there is. But then, if you and I've seen those videos of, of people throwing money all over the, the floor and jumping up, up and down on it, it's against all. But then, police are guarding those people. <laughs> to commit a crime in there, you're best to have it... The policeman in tow. Yes, to, to, to give you... Official guys don't get crime anymore. I'm not happy with the Lagos State government on mm. an issue I'm going to talk about now. Okay. Uh, they've been put it. Mm. Last week, there was, and some lady was given mm. that was it, about 20 litres of foil, yes. those who came. Yeah. And of course, had to, you know, created. Um, the place has been sealed up, mm. but the, today's Friday. They haven't identified the person to us. Somebody was telling me that in their own chat group, some lawyers were saying that she didn't commit a. Do you believe that? <laughs> saw the video. Uh, yes, and I that um, uh, the individual um, who's been conferred a title by a traditional ruler. There hmm. again, there again, the whole there's so many issues that are raised up by this sort of issue. Some unknown who obviously has money to buy expensive things and to give his scarcity is ennobled by some minor king somewhere. And um, to celebrate this, she goes to media identify herself. And, um, therefore, she has been the beneficiary of widespread public, public abuse yeah. and, and opprobrium, which is well deserved in my opinion. Uh, it, it shows frivolity of uh, public spaces. It shows trifling type of individuals who give attention and prominence in that space. It, it mm. says a lot about the society, mm. that, that this is the sort of evil which we should be talking about. Fortunately, I can't remember the name. It, 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 some information clogging up some point without in my, in my head. Uh, as I, I tell them, Someone, one of the most important lessons I learned was someone T20, and he says that if somebody wastes 10 minutes of your time, eight minutes is yours. Hmm. I after, guess so. so after two minutes, it's irrelevant individuals. But as to a crime was committed, I think that being an inflammable material into a confined space must breach of, of the health and safety regulations of any public yeah. space. And I cannot identify offhand what law was infringed, but certainly both the and the individual who put at risk I'm just committed. angry with the government, mm. um, especially this gentleman, that he always was restrained the law, drug laws, environment laws. It's not the same gentleman or this gentleman that we're talking about. It's a different gentleman. There's so many in Lagos State. So, this, so this, this gentleman is the one who occupies the seat of government. Ew, right. ew. Okay, He's right. the one that lives close to the water. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's not, it's not, it's not his boss. It's not right, his okay. Boss. One isn't really sure. This gentleman. Yeah, in the uh, it's not it's not it's not totally no, number one, uh, but it's close. Okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't aware. Of the, it's, 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 it's close enough. Right. I, I think that it's important that we. I'm worried about where our society is going, and I'm also talking to you not just as a lawyer, but as a citizen of our country. Right. And we're watching our environment being debased by so many new values that yes. you can't put your finger on. Yes. Um, who does that? To use the um was of my good friend Detroit Godalo. Who mm. does that? Mm. The jerry can of petrol at a party? Jerry cans of petrol at mm. a party? Even if it was that you owned the first station, you had fuel, you wanted to give it out, yes. didn't you give them vouchers? It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, it's irresponsible. And there again, it shows the low quality of thinking and of individuals who are being projected in a public space. But it's quite prevalent these days. Well, there you go. And, and, and it's worrying where you would have, uh, sorry to bring this up again, are youngsters defecating in public and eating it just because they want to have money? Oh, I hadn't heard that one. Oh, yes, there was that. There was another one to the world. <laughs> I should send you all of these TikToks. Honestly, I'm being saved from a lot of, infor <laughs> a lot of information that, 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 would, that would clog up my you, thinking. You, you, will, you will not be... That's the problem. I wish I was a lawyer instead of doing this media job. 
Um, there's more money in media than in law. There's no money. Yeah, I, I look at now. I would. You now I can <laughs> declare your assets there. <laughs> well, I have a phone. Yeah, I can declare. No, <laughs> no, no. We are not talking of the visible. <laughs> um, how much do you think it is to bring this gentleman? If you have a case, you go there to uh, you know, to work on back card. You have to pay to see him. Do you have an idea how much it if, if it's Jimmy Dizu, you can see it's free. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Doctor Doctor Ayani, did you go to Casey? No. No, you did okay, Doctor Ayani. He I was joking yesterday that um to the doctors are they are better at it. Mm. You have to get a card to mm. see a doctor. Mm. You don't do cards. Mm. But to answer that phone call I can jolly well imagine. Okay, let's take some. Let's take one or two more calls, and then we'll. Uh, what's the time? Nine for six. Please, when you call, call from a quiet place, okay? And switch off the radio. Hello, good Hello. morning. Hello, good morning, Uncle Jimmy. Morning, sir. Who's calling? Yes, my name is Ife. Ife. Yes. 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 I just want to quickly say one or two things. Then. Go on. Just go on. The, the, your guest in the studio has said a lot of things. But concerning Can you move away from those kids, please? Oh, sorry. Concerning the <laughs> Baba Koko, move away from them. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Concerning the uh, the judgment, the judgment about the governor that defected, mm. I think um, I have had his uh, take on it, and I think that is his own interpretation of the law. Okay. Um, I respect him. I know he's very well. I know his background. But um, I think that um, if that is the case, if that, there will be definitely be other interpretations, better interpretations of that law. I mean, that's so obvious, I, yes. Yes. Um, first of all, when somebody becomes a governor, he does not a governor of a party. He's a governor of the state. Yes. Yes. So, um, the platform that brought him to that party, I mean, to that position, mm. is a part of the society that mm. he's going to be a governor. And that is the essence of the party manifesto. Okay. The logo. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. So, I think he's not very wrong to I mean, right to me. Okay. You, you, you want to react to that? Thank you very much. Please, let, let, let's, let's make it clear that you have a minute. So try and compact your thoughts. And you can cut it off by saying good morning and whatever. You can cut off all the time... Uh, saying I want to just go straight and give your point, so you have a bit more time to express yourself. You want to react to him? Well, no, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a, a fair opinion. It's Everybody a fair has, opinion. Has, has his own perspective. Yes, um, yes. But another point I would add is that people who vote for a governor are not only party members. So he already said said it himself. Yes. You have voted yes. as governor of a yes. state. Um, your mandate is entirely different from the party mandate that you took to the polls. Once the polls are over, you hold the office for everybody, not for your party. That should be obvious. Okay. All right. Hello. Good morning. You're pulling the crowd here. Look at that. Hello. Uh -huh. Morning. Good morning. Morning, sir. Yeah, my name is Shego. I'm not sorry. I'm calling from Ikeja. Ah, this is the, the lawyer, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I remember <laughs> you. How are you? I'm very fine, sir. Are you? I'm, well, I'm hanging in there. I'm suffering, though. I'm hungry. <laughs> no, not, I'm not a son. Good, mo <laughs> good morning, Lennon <laughs> Silk. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good, good to hear from you this morning. And um, may I have to quickly chip in my opinion. To my mind, uh, for me, the votes are strictly for the individual. And I will say this. A party is an artificial person. A human being is a natural person. In other crimes, we have independent candidates. It's not possible to vote for a party without a candidate. For me, that's a clear distinction in my mind. And I think that, like, I agree entirely with the line they're saying. That's a moral issue, not a legal issue. Because... The democracy we practice is still growing. And if this, if this opinion stands, it will lead to chaos in the system. So for me, because you cannot vote for a party without a candidate, I would rather say that it's the candidate that owns the vote, not the party. That mm. said, sir, may I just um, appreciate Lenny Bessie? Um, I've listened to him carefully and um, without trying to patronize him. The truth is that this messenger aligns with his message. I've looked through, I've followed a lot of cases. You would hardly find his name in the case 
that in the great profession. I commend you, sir, because this is a profession that lacks, that looks for, desperate, is desperate to get role models, and you are one of them, and commend you for that. You well done, much. sir, and we are proud of you. What Thank do you commend so me to? Because I'm not a liar. This is a joro. Whether or not you hear from me, I'm always following your work. I know. God bless you, sir. I know, I know. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not for nothing that I, uh, maybe I need to let you know that I didn't know Mr. Candy Johnson from childhood. I knew him on the job, and we've become, you know, friends. It's always nice having having him around, uh, though we haven't had a drink together for the simple reason <laughs> that he drinks whiskey and I drink water. <laughs> 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 and he says I'll be a cheap date. <laughs> Imagine taking me to the choicest bar, and then he goes, like, "Can I have a double scotch?" And then I say, "Can I have a glass of water?" <laughs> Make this man not go disgraceful, Jerry. Okay, we have we have about two three minutes. Let's uh, take another call. Hello, good morning. Hello. Morning. Good morning, sir. Yes. Yeah, my, my name is Okwe. Yes. Yeah. Can I contribute? When well, that's why you called now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, please, I, I I want to say um, the issue of Bielsa. If we say party is the owner of the vote, that means they should have allowed APC to nominate another person when they disqualify the other guy. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But remember, <laughs> remember that judges are not the, the, the judgments are not the same across the board. It depends on the mind of the judge. To use the words of my late uh, good friend Taufik Elias, huh. um, when we have these discussions and I keep arguing with him, say, "Hey, Jimmy, you don't know the mind of the judge. Hmm. Does, that, does it work that way sometimes when you have a case?" Of, you, of you, course, you, judges are human beings. You yes. expect there to be some flexibility in their mm. perception, but mm. it is fundamental, as I said at the beginning, to the credibility of this type of system of justice we operate that like cases are decided alike. It should be mm. possible to predict that if these facts are presented, the courts will rule consistently across the board. Yes. These cases that we're referring to show that there is a collapse of judicial philosophy mm. and, a, and a collapse of judicial order because you're having judges approaching the same type of facts in different ways. This is a failure of our judicial system and wow. it's damaging to our polity. Okay, so let's take um, five. Okay, I, I, I'll go a bit further than I did yesterday. Uncle Jimmy, good morning. Uncle, morning, sir. Who's calling? This is Mr. Frank. I'm calling from Ojoala. Yes, sir. Please go on. Now, this governor of Ebony State has taken this matter to our people. Yes. Now, how long do I want to ask the lawyer? How long, uh, how long is he going to last, or are they going to drag it now to the end of his tenure? Okay, thank you. But uh, before he answers, I, I, I think that is what everybody is saying. That was at the back of the mind of the man. By the time the case is decided from appeal, we we'll might go to Supreme Court. Mm. By the time all that is decided, his tenure will be over. Yes, politicians who exploit the weakness of our judicial system hmm. often make the calculation that its inefficiency and the incompetence in the administration of the judicial system means that they can buy time. Yes. And they can waste time. I'm quite sure that the calculation in many political camps across many political cases is that if they can get some temporary advantage or, or, or stave off some disadvantage, mm. that they can extend this to the end of time. In a case time. like this, in, 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 a, in a credible judicial system, this appeal should be listed for Monday hmm. and it should be disposed of within the next two days. But it won't be. It won't be. And that's a failure of judicial administration. Okay. Thank you very much, Yemi Kandi Johnson. It's nice having you. I'll be back here tomorrow. The discourse tomorrow is has Kyodi Samuel. Kyodi Samuel is a journalist and a writer of very high repute, but he's also the chief of staff to Governor Gwenga Daniel. Now there's a crisis going on in the APC, or at least in Ogun State. Uh, generally, the governor, a lot of the governor, governor's aides have resigned. Uh, one of his commissioners, I think she was commissioner of SA, says she wants to run for governor. And then yesterday or two days ago, there's some things making the round about the governor's past. Um, I, I don't know. These are allegations. We, we, we don't know yet. But they seem weighty. They seem to have some proof. Anyway, uh, I said to myself, I have a one leg in Ogun, in the sense that I happen to work there for a few years. I have loads of friends 
who are from Ogun who, and who are politically minded. Indeed, Ben Gadanel himself, the governor, who was friends in university and so on and so forth. So I have more than a passing interest in Ogun. So I want to bring Kaede Samuel tomorrow to come and dissect what exactly is going on and what are the things we should expect. So if you're from Ogun, you don't want to miss it. I've made special arrangements. Usually Saturday is not on YouTube and Facebook Live, but I've dragged Sheriff from his vacation. And he's promised me that we'll be on both Facebook Live and uh, YouTube tomorrow. So our uh, Ogun listeners, just in case you don't get a good reception, then you can go to Facebook and YouTube. So tomorrow will be Mr. Kaede Samuel, and he'll be here to dissect whatever it is. The techers are here any minute from now. They'll come in one more time. Yemi, thank you very much for coming. I'll see you all tomorrow at 9. Bye. Spotlight on me. Now let me tell you this. I used to care for the world's opinion. And I used to fear their rejection. Or more, I used to beg for validation. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.